So a frozen shoulder is a really complicated condition. Lots of people still don't really understand it. Um, some of the population will get it from, say, a trip or a slip or a fall or a sporting accident. And some people may come out of surgery, having been pulled around a little bit, I've had some work done somewhere else on their body, and they might find that they've got a frozen shoulder afterwards. Um, especially for people that have sort of fractured their humerus or their shoulder, um, that, that can be a factor as well. But most people get it and it, it comes on for no reason at all. Uh, most people will notice just some kind of stiffness starting out and then some pain gradually starting to come on to a point of where they're finding certain movements really difficult, like putting their hand behind their back, putting their hand on top of their head uh, and doing kind of basic tasks like lifting a kettle up or turning a door handle, that sort of thing. Um, the reason why people get frozen shoulder, like I say, it's still unknown in the kind of medical world really, but what happens is, is the capsule around the shoulder starts to kind of freeze up and hold on and then you can get kind of fibrous tissue around the capsule which makes it really difficult to move and can make it very painful as well. Women are more likely to get a frozen shoulder than men although we do still see lots of men in the clinic with a frozen shoulder. It's more than likely going to be on your non-dominant side so for example if you're right-handed it's going to be on your, or your left side but that's not always the case. Um, you might be more predisposed to it if you have other conditions such as type 2 diabetes. Um, also stress can be a big factor as well. If you're someone who's got a lot of stress in your life at the moment and you've noticed that your shoulder's getting particularly painful, then that can be a big factor as well. And one of the, the biggest things is age. So anyone really between the age of sort of 40 to 65 is the most kind of you know, biggest group of people that we'd see with a frozen shoulder. Have seen them in slightly younger people, but again, that's usually linked to some sort of trauma or surgery, and sometimes in an older patient as well. So someone with a frozen shoulder, it will start to affect their life by, number one, they'll notice stiffness to begin with. So stiffness will start to build up in the shoulder. And then they'll start to get pain with it as well. And just simple movements like putting your hand on top of your head or behind your back, you'll start to notice that they become particularly painful. Or if you're trying to get something out of your back pocket or reach behind to try and grab your seat belt or something by your bedside table. And then gradually the pain will probably get worse and the stiffness will start to build up. And then you'll notice certain movements, particularly abduction and external rotation of your shoulder will get particularly stiff. So most people who have a frozen shoulder will present by moving their arm up in front and then it gets stuck around kind of anywhere from here to here and then same as you come up to abduction and also biggest one external rotation will get stuck or placing your hand behind your back. They'll be the most painful uh, positions. It might affect your sleep. You might find it difficult sleeping on that side or getting off to sleep. Um, you may also find things like sitting at a computer for long periods of time are causing you pain or any kind of sort of sporting activity, especially sort of racket sports or swimming, particularly kind of front crawl swimming. So if you were thinking about diagnosis, diagnosis is really, really important. Obviously, number one, we want to make sure that it is actually a frozen shoulder that you have. And obviously seeing a health professional like a physiotherapist will really help with that. Um, but it could be another problem. Um, so rotator cuff pain is another uh, particularly kind of um, common injury and in shoulder pain. Uh, it's often more in the athletic population, in the younger population. But, you know, frozen shoulder is a relatively easy thing to diagnose in clinic. Um, so come in, get an assessment, we can assess it properly because there's lots of other things that could be going on with your shoulder, but probably one of the most common other injuries is a rotator cuff injury. So if you have a frozen shoulder and you don't do absolutely anything about it, then the likelihood is, is you're going to be in pain for a lot longer. Perhaps seeing a physiotherapist, having some treatment will help your recovery and help to speed it up. Number one, the diagnosis is really important. Get a good diagnosis so we know exactly what's going on. Number two, give you the right type of exercises so you can progress gradually. And we'll look at you every time you come in and try and improve your exercises and increase your strength. And then gradually we can get you back to doing sort of functional things as well. 
So the first thing to do is to book in at the clinic, come in and have an assessment with a physiotherapist. We can assess you properly, make sure we've got a good diagnosis, give you the right type of exercise program and treatment, and we can help to wipe away months of pain.